The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... How many of you want the Holy Spirit and believe He's a real person that will move into your hearts? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, there's only one other alternative. You are demon harassed or demon possessed. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts Presents. Today's presentation is an excerpt from the Everlasting Gospel video series. When you were young, did you ever have fear of the dark or something that could be crawling around under your bed or creeping up the hall? Come on now. But it seems like uh, anywhere you go in the world and just about anybody's life at some point there are these minions of darkness that scare us. The Bible has another name for them. They're known as demons, devils, or evil spirits. And you'd be surprised how much the Word of God has to say about this subject. How to defeat demons, devils, and evil spirits. And uh, there are even those who profess to be Christians that say there is no such thing as devils and evil spirits or demons. They don't believe in them any more than they believe in boogeymen. But you've got to be careful if you say you're a Bible Christian because Jesus believed in them and He dealt with them and He talks about them and you and I are given a work to do in relationship with these evil spirits. We have a divine mandate from the Lord in how we ought to relate with these forces of evil. Mark chapter 16 verse 17. Jesus is about to ascend to heaven. Part of His great commission, final utterance. And these signs will follow those who believe. It doesn't say these signs will follow the apostles. It says those who believe. By the way, isn't that supposed to be all of us who are saved? Amen. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. It's interesting he would mention that first. In my name they will cast out demons. Then he goes on, they'll speak with new tongues and there's other signs. But I want to emphasize that the last words of Jesus maybe should have a first priority among Christians. It's something the Bible deals with. It's not a pleasant business. And so, you know, we're not sure what we're supposed to do. And I think we've all seen that the subject of devils and evil spirits has been exploited and, and some preachers have used it to fear monger and take advantage of people and manipulate people and sometimes it's spooky. Whenever you hear about someone who's being delivered from evil spirits, we picture somebody who's writhing on the ground. They're back arched or they're sitting on the floor and they're whipping their heads back and forth so fast their hair cracks like a whip and their head turns around on their shoulders 360 degrees. We got these pictures when you talk about evil spirits and possession that scare us. It's a little more comfortable to just say, oh really in the Bible when it talks about demon possession it was just another way of saying depressed or mentally disturbed. It's not what the Bible teaches. There's more to it than that. Where did devils and evil spirits come from? You know, interesting, in the last few years, angels have sort of made a comeback. You can hear about angels and read about angels, and everyone thinks angels are great, and people have little crystals of angels, and they got little angel signs and angel wings, and you say angels, and people just go, ooh, you know, it's wonderful, but they forget that about a third of those angels are evil, but they can appear good. It stands to reason to me, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, so it should not surprise us if his angels 
can also be transformed into angels of light, evil angels that can appear as good angels. God did not make devils. God made beautiful angels that fell. You can read in Isaiah 14, Satan, who started out as a perfect angel, fell. He was cast out of heaven. Isaiah 14, 12, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. He was a light bearer. And you can read then in Revelation 12, verse 7, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels. Christ has his angels, and the dragon has his angels. Fought, but they did not prevail. Good news, God and his angels are stronger than the devil and his angels. They did not prevail, nor was there place for them in heaven any longer. Bad news. They're not in heaven anymore. Where are they? Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. I'll get to that in just a minute. And it says they were, their place was not found in heaven, so that great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now there's a story in the Bible I'd like to direct your attention to. You're going to find this in Mark chapter 1, and it will begin with verse 21. If I were to ask you, what is the first miracle of Jesus? What's the first miracle of Jesus? Water into wine, water into wine. That's right. That's if you're reading the Gospel of John. But that's not the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark says the first miracle of Jesus was delivering someone from an evil spirit. Now, John, when he talked about miracles, he was thinking about something where you supernaturally transform something from one thing to another. Uh, you know, maybe his definition was different. And based on that definition, turning water to wine, that's in an intimate things out here. And the spiritual battle, he may not have qualified it that way. But if you want to go by the first supernatural engagement, it was actually where Jesus, when he began preaching, cast the devil out of someone. We're going to read about this. What did I say? First Mark, first Mark, Mark chapter 1, first chapter, verse 21. Then they went to Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. This is right after Christ begins his preaching ministry. He's just called Peter, James, or Peter, James, John, and Andrew to follow him. Small ensemble of apostles. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. By the way, that's repeated in Matthew 7, verse 28. Jesus taught with authority. Now what's the evidence of his authority? Notice here. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, Let us alone. It sounds like he might have more than one spirit. Us. Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Well, it seems like the man, first of all, he's got his uh, plural and singular all scrambled up here which is often the case with a person demon-possessed. Sometimes you don't know if you're talking to one person or ten. Or if you're dealing with the demoniac there in the beach of Gadara, he had legions of demons, meaning that a, more than one demon can possess a person. There are some people who are possessed, and they're able to conduct themselves in a civilized way, but the devil's got his claws in them, and they need deliverance. There's some area in their life where they're owned by the enemy. This is getting pretty real, isn't it? This is what the Bible teaches. So here's this man. I want to read the whole story to you. Let us alone. What do we have to do with you, Jesus? Did they know who Jesus was? Why? And they knew they're eternal. They lived before Lucifer fell. These were once holy angels that used to worship Jesus. They know who he is. It's amazing that there's some people that don't think Christ was God become a man. Even the devils admitted it. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out. Why did he convulse him first? 
please, don't anyone have a convulsion now. But that often happens. You know what it illustrates? The devil doesn't let go easily. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed and cried out, he came out with a loud voice. He cried out with a loud voice. He came out of him. They were all amazed, and they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, notice how we started out. It says they were amazed at his authority. And at the end of the experience of this exorcism, it says, For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout the region of Galilee. And you begin to tell the truth about the spiritual warfare that is going on out there. The devil does not want people to take him seriously. How many of you want the Holy Spirit and believe he's a real person that will move into your hearts? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, there's only one other alternative. You are demon harassed or demon possessed. There's no neutral ground. Well, I'm not ready for God's Spirit, and I'm not going to let the devil bother me. I'm in charge of my own life. You're kidding yourself. You belong to the devil. There's only two powers in this life, if you believe the Bible. Jesus said, if you're not with me, you're against me, right along with the devil who's against him. And so I advise you to join the winning team, friends. There's only one. They can cause physical reactions. We just read a minute ago when he said, come out of that young man. The, the boy convulsed or the young man convulsed. So sometimes it causes physical reactions. Mark 9, 26, this boy who was having these seizures, Jesus said to the father, how long has this happened? And later the disciples said, why couldn't we cast out that devil? And Jesus said, these kind of devils don't come out except by prayer and fasting. Christ said it was a demonic problem. Mark 9, 26, Then the Spirit cried out and convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. There was no more problem anymore. So, what is the work of devils? Well, they've got a pretty broad job description. One thing I want you to know is that deception is one of the top tools in their box. They deceive about what they're doing. They'd like to blame it on anybody or anything else. Revelation chapter 16 verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils. What is the work of demons? The spirits of devils working miracles. Can devils work miracles? Can they? Can they make it appear that it's a miracle of God and it's really a miracle from the devil? When Moses went before the Pharaoh and he threw his serpent down, no, he threw his rod down, it became a serpent. And the Pharaoh's magicians came in and they counterfeited the miracles of God. The devil can do that. The devil can make a person sick and then miraculously appear to remove that sickness so someone says, oh, that faith healer must be of God because look they got better. Well they never would have been sick if it wasn't for the devil. He just temporarily withdrew the affliction to give the illusion that this person has the power of healing. So you can't even use miracles or healings as a sign for who's really from God. The devil can counterfeit these things. And some people might, might go and to a diabolical faith healer. They'll experience some relief and it could be genuine relief because Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. The person might go with a genuine, sincere faith and they're healed by their own faith. It's called the placebo effect. And so, uh, and the devil will use that to his advantage. What is the final fate of these fallen angels? Jude, first verse, or first chapter is only one, verse six. And the angels that kept, kept not their proper domain, the fallen angels, they left their own abode he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Second Peter 2 4 says almost the same thing. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. The Bible says these angels are held in this dark world waiting their judgment. And that's why when Jesus came many times the angel would say, have you come to torment us before the time? They said to Jesus, they know that their punishment 
is coming. Matter of fact, they're really hyperactive right now because you can read in Revelation 12, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for Satan has come down unto you having great wrath, for he knows his time is short. Jesus tells us in Matthew 25 verse 41, Then he will say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. There's only two people, the saved and the lost, the blessed and the cursed. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So they share in the fate of their leader. The devil who, and this is Revelation 20.10, The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they're tormented there day and night forever and ever. Now that word day and night forever and ever indicates that they are going to be burned up according to what they deserve and they never ever will exist again. They're gone forever and ever. Now I'm going to venture in the last few minutes to talk about casting out devils. So what do you do to cast out devils? How does it happen? What does the Bible say? Mark chapter 134, evicting demons. He healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. Now I want to pause here for a minute. Do you see the Bible making a distinction between physical sickness and spiritual sickness? Yeah. He healed those who were sick with various diseases and cast out many devils. And he did not allow the devils to speak because they knew him. I always worry about these folks that I've run into folks that have these exorcism ministries and, and they say, yeah, I was talking to this devil right here and I, I identified him. He was a devil of a hay fever. I said, you sneeze out, you devil of hay fever. And they start, they talk to him. Don't, you don't want to engage the devils to talk. I mean, Jesus said, be, be quiet. He always told them, be quiet. The only one time he said to that one, what is your name? And he did that for our benefit so we'd know how many demons had possessed that man. But he didn't want to enter into dialogue. Even the, the devil, when he came to get the body of Moses and, and uh, Michael came to resurrect Moses, the devil said, you can't have him. He's mine. He sinned. And Jesus said, no, I've forgiven him. And he said, matter of fact, Jesus didn't even say that. He didn't enter into a conversation with him. He said, the Lord rebuke thee. And he came, took Moses to heaven. So you don't want to get into a dialogue with the devil. By the way, we're all in trouble today because Eve got into a discussion with the devil. And if you, you've heard about a silver-tongued devil, he's the one that started with it. You don't want to think you're going to out-talk him. The only thing you want to quote to the devil is Scripture and the name of Jesus. Jesus said, Matthew 10, 8, when He sent out the apostles, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. Mark 1, 27, 28. They were all amazed and they said, What is this new doctrine? For with authority he commands unclean spirits and they obey him. So whose authority do we have? Ours? We don't have any authority. Does he have authority? Do you really believe that Jesus has authority over the devil? then if you enter into prayer with that in mind and you believe you're going to see results. Let me share this with you real quick. Some of the principles in the Bible for casting out devils. First of all, prepare your own heart. If you're going to be praying for somebody that you really believe is more than just demon harassed and we should always pray for each other because we're all tempted, make sure that you are in a position to pray. Ask God to forgive your sins. Ask God to hear your prayers, not because you are righteous, but for the sake of Christ's righteousness. The Bible tells us, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, humbleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. You'd hate to go to someone to cast out the devil and you catch what they've got. So do it in an attitude of humility. By the way, you know why I said that? When you enter into this uh, activity, you want to pray and make sure that you're sent of God. Acts 19.13 Some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We will exorcise you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. 
also there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirits was leaped on them and overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. You want to make sure that you know Jesus. What did that devil say? I know Paul and I know Jesus, but I don't know you. So if you're going to enter into prayer that someone else has delivered, then you make sure you've got that relationship with him. Number two, pray and fast. Point number two, you remember that father brought his son to Jesus? The disciples tried to cast out the devil and they couldn't. Don't be discouraged if you are unsuccessful. You're in good company. Sometimes the apostles were unsuccessful. Don't give up. They said, Lord, why couldn't we do it? He said, this kind only comes forth by prayer and fasting. You might have some loved ones or children that they're addicted to drugs or something else and you want them to be free, fast and pray for them. Cite scripture. And I'm not doing these in the order of priority. That might be the first one. Use the word. What did Jesus use when the devil tried to tempt him in the wilderness? It was the word of God. Uh, the devil's words is what often puts the devil in people. It's Christ's word that expels them. When Jesus was battling the devil over and over, he said, it is written, it is written. Now very simply, I believe the devils could be cast out today from people who are either sitting here, who are listening or watching through TV or tape. They might not fall on the ground. Their eyes may not roll back in their head. Their veins may not stand out in their neck. The Word of God might do it quietly. The Word of God can set people free without some big demonstration. And so I think more times than not when Jesus went out preaching and said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand casting out devils it was the preaching that cast out the devils. The preaching of the word gives people victory. So most of the time that's how it happens. Make sure that you're claiming the promises of God and citing scripture. Pray for those who are afflicted. I know that stands as a basic but not only fast and pray, but you want to be praying on an ongoing basis for them. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, if you believe, you want to believe. All things are possible to them who believe. So when you're fasting and praying, believe that God is going to set them free. Invoke as your authority the name of Jesus. Now I've heard pastors abuse that and they almost repeat the name of Jesus in an irreverent way. We should take the name of the Son of God with reverence upon our lips. There's examples for this in the, in the Bible. Paul, greatly annoyed when that demon-possessed girl was following him, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, you want to know what to say? Say what Paul said, to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. So claim the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus. Christ said these signs will follow those who believe in my name they will cast out demons. Again Mark 16, 17. You pray for deliverance in some area from the devil who's harassing you and you fall. Don't give up. Get up again. You know the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. You may have to pray many times. Many times Jesus had to pray over the, his own apostles and, and they fell. But God wants to set us free. The good news is greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The way we're going to win is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, put on the whole armor of God in the Word of God, in the Spirit, through prayer. That's these things I'm talking about. This is all the armor of God. Through that we can be shielded against the attacks of the devil. And ultimately the Word of God which is the sword of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God, that's going to give us the power to overcome the enemy. So friends, I just wanted to cover this with you. This is a biblical truth. And you know, if they needed this back when Jesus came the first time, I think the church needs it as Christ is preparing to come the second time. The devil has come down with great wrath. We need to know we have a very real enemy out there and that God has given us the tools to find victory. He wants you to be free. You can be free. 
you can do all things through Christ. Greater is he that is in you. Christ's authority, Christ's name, he can set you free from whatever those demonic harassments are. And in some cases, it might be that they've moved into some area of your life. And he wants to set you free. Stay tuned. Pastor Doug will be right back with this week's special free offer. Armageddon is the final mobilization of the powers and armies of the world to exterminate God's people. All the forces of the world are going to be gathered against those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus in the last days. That is the battle of Armageddon. Our faith needs to be rooted in what does the Bible say, not what great miracle has happened that's on the news all over the world. If you've been encouraged by today's message and would like to know more of what God's Word says to you today, Amazing Facts invites you to visit our educational website at www.bibleuniverse.com. At Bible Universe, you'll discover exciting truths that will fill you with peace and purpose. The mysteries of the Bible will unfold for you at your own pace. Visit www.bibleuniverse.com today. Expand your universe. If you've missed any of our Amazing Facts programs, visit our website at AmazingFacts.org. There you'll find an archive of all our television and radio programs, including Amazing Facts Presents. One location, so many possibilities. AmazingFacts.org. Hello, friends. I hope that today's presentation has helped you better understand the value that God places on the free will of His creatures. The Lord never forces us to love Him. It must be our choice. Unfortunately, Satan's choice to rebel has initiated all the trouble that we see in the world today. But the Bible tells us that God is actively working to restore the universe to the way that it was before the devil's mutiny. You can live a life of victory over Satan's temptations and be part of God's restored kingdom. We'd like to share more information with you on this topic so our free gift for you today is a study guide entitled, Did God Create a Devil? And we'll send it to you absolutely free. If you just call the number on your screen, ask for offer number 107. Or you can write us at Amazing Facts, offer number 107, PO Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Or you can also go to our website, www.amazingfacts.org Remember the promise of Christ Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world This is your last chance to take advantage of this week's special free offer There is no cost or obligation Just call the toll free number on your screen and be sure to note the offer number when you make your request Preceding was a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Another name for them. They're known as demons, devils, or evil spirits. And you'd be surprised how much the Word of God has to say about this subject. How to defeat demons, devils, and evil spirits. And uh, there are even those who profess to be Christians that say there is no such thing as devils and evil spirits or demons. They don't believe in them any more than they believe in boogeyman. But you've got to be careful if you say you're a Bible Christian because Jesus believed in them and He dealt with them and He talks about them and you and I are given a work to do in relationship with these evil spirits. We have a divine mandate from the Lord in how we ought to relate with these forces of evil. Mark chapter 16 verse 17. Jesus is about to ascend to heaven. Part of His great commission, final utterance. And these signs will follow those who believe. It doesn't say these signs will follow the apostles. It says those who believe. By the way, isn't that supposed to be... Amazing Facts presents... 
Today's presentation is an excerpt from the Everlasting Gospel video series. When you were young, did you ever have fear of the dark or something that could be crawling around under your bed or creeping up the hall? Come on now. But it seems like uh, anywhere you go in the world and just about anybody's life, at some point there are these minions of darkness that scare us. The Bible has in all of us who are saved. Amen. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. It's interesting he would mention that first. In my name they will cast out demons. Then he goes on, they'll speak with new tongues and there's other signs. But I wanted to emphasize that the last words of Jesus maybe should have a first priority among Christians. It's something the Bible deals with. It's not a pleasant business. And so, you know, we're not sure what we're supposed to do. And I think we've all seen that the subject of devils and evil spirits has been exploited and, and some preachers. The following is a paid presentation brought to you by Amazing Facts Incorporated. Coming up next on Amazing Facts Presents... How many of you want the Holy Spirit and believe He's a real person that will move into your hearts? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, there's only one other alternative. You are demon harassed or demon possessed. For over 40 years, Amazing Facts has been dedicated to sharing God's Word through media. This program features highlights from some of our best television broadcasts. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Amazing Facts.